hurts, doesn't it? And Lot had an issue with this. He rather enjoyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I wonder if in their house, they, he was running around and saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's not leave Grandma Edna's picture here. We've got to take it with us. Oh, wait a minute, honey. Look under the mattress. Didn't we leave some money under there? Some of you probably hide your money in mattresses. It might be safer than in banks, by the way. All right? Oh, come on, listen to me. They got used to it. They got accustomed to it. Don't get too used to this world. And as the angelic beings were telling them, come on, we've got to get out of here, they hesitated. They had to get a hold of them, get them out of there. Because judgment was coming, but it couldn't happen until Lot and his family left. I literally believe that before Jesus comes back, we who are Christians will be drawn away. 1 Thessalonians chapter 14. Uh, I think that there's going to be such tribulation that takes place that it won't take place until all born-again Christians are, are zapped out of here. Oh, when you hear the trumpet, are right, you ready? Take your hand and do this. Make a fist. When you hear the trumpet, do this. <laughs> Let it go. You can't take it with you, right? Uh, the trumpet was sounding. The angels were begging. Their hands were being held. They were being drugged out of the city. Lot lingers. What is true repentance? Oh, you're, you're thinking, well, wow, preacher, where'd that come from? What does it mean to truly turn your back on the things that used to keep us away from Jesus? John said, First, bring forth fruits in keeping with your repentance. He said that to some before he would baptize them. Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus said this one time, he who places his hands on the plow and looks back is not worthy. He's not worthy for the kingdom. Listen to what he says, folks. When Jesus said, come follow me, every time, Every time Jesus said that to somebody, it meant a complete change in direction. You can't keep going your way and follow Jesus at the same time. It's a turnabout. It's a turnaround. It's an about face. You've got to leave all that behind. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. Just look at all the twos. 2 Peter 2, 22. A dog returns to his vomit... A sow, having been washed, returns to wallowing. John chapter 10 says, Oh, but my sheep, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. Uh, let's follow Jesus, right? Um, Dina, your grandpa, Raleigh, uh, one time I asked him, matter of fact, I did this in church. Uh, I think it was his birthday uh, back in the day, and I asked Raleigh, I said, Raleigh, you were a preacher down in Kentucky, back in the coal mine area and stuff like that. I said, where did you get your sermons from? Are you ready for this? He did this. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? We've got to close one ear off to the world and open the other one and cup it. Listen closely to heaven. Uh, leave all this stuff behind and follow Christ. Well, here is Lot's wife. She looked back. The angelic beings, heaven told her not to. Don't look back. And when she looks back, she turns into a pillar of salt. Why such drastic punishment, folks? Well, I'll tell you, I think what happened is this that God read her heart when she looked back. God knew that in her looking back, she did not want to leave Sodom and Gomorrah, Gomorrah behind. Um, there's an old saying, you can take the boy out of the country, but too much of Sodom and Gomorrah was in her. And she couldn't leave it. When she turned around and looked, 
she turned into a pillar of salt. I don't often quote um, non-biblical sources, but in um, the Apocrypha, which is writings in between the Testaments, the Book of Wisdom says she continually looked back. It wasn't just a glance. She kept looking back. Her heart was back there, not with the Lord. And just like the citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah, she suffered the punishment. To be caught between the two, isn't that how many people are living today? Caught between the two. Um, I think the Bible actually says in the valley of decision, right? Um, To go with Christ and leave it all behind or to enjoy sin for a season. There was a king that Paul preached to. His name is Agrippa. And Agrippa called Paul out of the jail cell. And Agrippa says, "Uh, Paul... Uh, tell me why you're here. Why? What's going on? And Paul explained the gospel to Agrippa. And with such detail that Agrippa said this, Paul, you're out of your mind. You almost persuade me to become a Christian. Ooh, can I say this? What damning words come out of a man's mouth? You almost persuade me. The two daughters, I'm not so sure Lot actually knew what was down inside of them. The thing goes completely haywire after this happens. Their mother turns into salt. They then ask the angelic beings, let us go to the mountains now because this little village called Zoar is probably going to be destroyed also. Uh, May I say this, and I say this loudly and clearly, but I want to say it. Ready? Ready? You know the story. If you don't know it, read it later. But obviously, these two young ladies had a very low estimation of the intimacy between husband and wife. Okay? My Bible teaches that marriage is between one man and one woman. And there is such a low estimation of intimacy that they actually... um, commit some horrible sin with their father. Uh, Dear teenagers, uh, listen to me loud and clear. Here it comes. Here comes Papa Tuff's going to talk to you. You perpetually have a video camera running. Whatever you get involved with, with a young lady or a young man, that video will play for the rest of your life. Uh, Keep yourself until the day that you take your husband or your wife. Keep yourself. Have I said it clearly enough, boys and girls? Is that clear enough? Uh, There's a strong message there. They had a very low estimation of the intimacy between a man and a woman. The righteous now being extracted, there's an indifference on the part of the residents of Sodom and Gomorrah. As... Chapter 17 of Luke states, They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Um, uh, They sold, they bought, they planted, they built. Uh, They carried on life with no warning reaching the heart. They'd heard the words. Lot had spoken to his sons-in-law that were engaged to his daughters. And it seemed as if he were joking with them and indifference. May I please invite you to be persistent in your witness. There are some people who are going to be completely indifferent to what you say. Never give up. Because all of eternity hinges on your speaking to that person. Never give up. Keep sharing Christ. The aftermath. I know that sin is sin is sin. But God has a purpose for you and I. He has a purpose for our bodies. Don't get that wrong. Uh, uh, The New Testament teaches that as Christians, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Take care of that temple. 
The Holy Spirit indwells you. Uh, don't deface it. Don't throw it away. Don't defame His name. Uh, take care of that. There is the sovereignty will of God. He designed you the way you are. In Psalm 139, my Bible says, uh, You formed me while in my mother's womb. God has a plan for specifically you. With all of the things that are going on in our society today, and listen to me clearly, there are so many people who want to argue with God that He mismade them. Uh, I think that's a slap in the Almighty's face. He made you the way you are. Follow His will for your being. And finally, when we read on in this marvelous story of Genesis chapter 19, the Bible says, And God remembered Abraham. There was a praying person behind all of this. If that person had not been praying, I don't know how the rest of it was going to turn out. But God remembered Abraham. I want to invite you, please, keep speaking to the Lord and keep praying for your loved ones and keep doing this, shutting it off to the world and opening up to heaven. I'm going to invite you to bow your hearts and your heads with me as we get ready to sing. I, uh, this is uh, one that we kind of sing on Mother's Day and Father's Day. God give us Christian homes, but I don't know a better song to close our service with. With your heads bowed, and your eyes closed, I want to thank you for allowing me to have the liberty to say what I've just said. I trust that you know that I've been coming from the book. That God has designed every male the way he has designed them for a particular purpose. Every female the way he has designed them for a particular purpose. And it's against heaven's plans for us to argue with the Lord about how He has made us. His sovereign will. But, with all of this, let me say one more thing. But He's also created every man and every woman, every boy and every girl with a hollow spot in their hearts. That if that hollow spot is not filled with Jesus Christ, then everything can go haywire as in this story. So, Make sure you're trusting the Savior and that you're following His will for your life. He has a magnificent plan for you. As we sing, if you've yet to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, then we invite you to respond to the invitation as we extend it to you. Come, come and find the Savior. Maybe some have been praying about making this your church home or following the Lord in believer's baptism. Come and share that decision with the congregation. And so, Lord, as we sing this last song, give us Christian homes. Give us Christian moms and Christian dads. Give us Christian children. That in a society that's going haywire, and it could be even worse than what it used to be. Help us to stand strong in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ.